Alright, hello everyone, Simon here. We're playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. And we are going back for more investigation in the recipe for Turnabout. What exactly does Turnabout mean? <laughs> turnabout. A sudden and complete change or reversal of policy, opinion, or of a situation. Well, that does explain a lot of this. <laughs> We are just flopping back and forth with all these cases. January 7, 12.52pm, Wright & Co. Law Offices. So how do you think the trial went this morning? How do you think it went? It got a bit crazy in there, yeah, turnabout. I just wonder if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. It did nothing to help the other side either. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. All we know is what old Mr. Kudo saw, the apron straps and the ribbon. And that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. Talk about a terrifying case of contradictionitis. Time to play doctor and find ourselves a cure then, huh? That's just the worst series of puns. Yeah! We've got to find one for Maggie or she's going to have a terminal case at stop. Stop it. Stop. Well, I'm officially at a loss as to where to start. Yeah, me too. Let's try some brainstorming. You go first. I guess we should try to put Mr. Kudo's testimony to some sort of use. Yeah, that's true. And we need to figure out the identity of the waitress and who the victim really was. Somehow, I think the key to this case has got to be a uh, very good. Well then, let's go back there and check it out again! Oh, and we should drop in on Maggie and see how she's doing too. So, anything on your mind? Actually, there is something. I was wondering about Zin Yop. Yop. You know, like, what he's like and stuff. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot about that guy. He's a... he's a Yakuza wannabe? I ought to beat you so hard... I ought to beat you so hard, it'll feel like you're smooching the express train. I'm not gonna do the accents. Phoenix Wright! You're saying you're Phoenix Wright? Because I'm Phoenix Wright! The one and only! Actually, I've learned a little something about my doppelganger. Ha, ah, you did! What did you find out? Oh yeah, Mai was working at the restaurant when I ran into Don Fonioni. What? Let's just say he was such a terrible version of me that I want to sue for defamation. What's that guy's story anyway? What does he have to gain by impersonating me? Present to her... I don't have his profile... Evidence. Alright, moving. Criminal Affairs Department. January 7, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Looks like Gumshoe's not here. Never mind that. What's going on? It feels different in here, somehow. You think? Yeah, everyone seems to be on edge. What are you doing? Call in the officers for the briefing, quick! Can't you shut down the station server? Chief, quit playing on the internet. <laughs> but my email pen pal, Elite Asian Princess. Pri princess or princess? Save it for later, I'm turning it off now. No, Elite Asian Princess. Everyone's keeping busy in here, huh? Keeping busy? More like panicking if you ask me. Something's going on, something big. <laughs> Elite Asian Princess. <laughs> this must be the chief of detectives here. He looks lost now that the power to his computer has been cut. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to write her a real letter instead of an email. Alternatively, you could write up some reports, just a suggestion. Dear Elite Asian Princess, how are you? I'm okay. How was the show last night? Wow, what an awesome job. Maybe I should send in my resume and become chief. <laughs> Did they get hacked? Like, what's going on? 
That must be one of the de detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Even pickpockets can have their pockets picked. That's a keeper. Better to go with something that doesn't sound too much like a slogan. He must be coming up with slogans for crime prevention campaign. <laughs> but I'm not sure even he knows what kind of crime he's trying to prevent. <laughs> Alright, let's move down to the detention center. January 7, detention center. Visitor's room. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. Wow, thanks game. But! But we've got questions to ask her too! Maggie! Keep it down, Maya. This isn't a playground, you know. Alright, well, we're not doing that. January 7, very good. Empty, as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime too. That's it! Come on, come on! Hey, that sounds like... Now just call an 8, pal! Come on, I know you can! What? He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number! Looks like an 8 would have only netted me 5 bucks anyway. What a ripoff. <laughs> What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, uh, ha ha ha, I was just, uh, Lameo. I was just listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is, and he's having the twin tea set. Aha, <laughs> uh ha, -huh, huh. what can I say? What can you say? Is there a waitress here? Can I examine the other side of the of the restaurant? This is a nightmare! How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? You really drove her into a corner, you know. You always blow apart my testimony. Why, of all days, didn't you do it today? <laughs> Sorry, there just weren't any holes in it for once. Yeah, what happens? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese? <laughs> Would you have preferred crumbly like aged parmesan? Anyway, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So did Maggie say anything to you? About me, I mean? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, um... How did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe! I hate him, sir! I mean it! I don't ever want to see him again! <laughs> mm. Something like that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Please, Detective Gumshoe, I didn't mean... Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall. Nick! Oh, man. Poor Gumshoe. <laughs> he said, where? <laughs> so did you like the twin tea set? I've never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. So, how did it taste? Well, for 20 bucks, I guess. I don't know how to describe it, really. It was... Delicate. <laughs> what? Delicate? You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? <laughs> What's the matter with him? Looks like he's thinking. That's it! I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realized it's bad! That's it! It tasted bad! Sigh. <laughs> it's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you pay 20 bucks for it, you know? <laughs> Maybe he should have found out about the price after he had finished eating. Hey Nick, maybe that's why Glen Elk came here. Maybe he heard about the super fierce twin tea set. If by fierce you mean fearsome. Speaking of Glen Elk, that reminds me. We still hardly know anything about the guy. Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here. Alright. So what were you excited about earlier? Huh? That's right! You said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh that. That was nothing. I wasn't excited. <laughs> Come on, Detective Gumshoe. You can tell the door of me. What were you listening to? Nothing, really. It was just the, um... Daily Exercise Show. <laughs> Come on. 
What the? A psyche lock? Ah ha ha ha, this lunch special is lobster sure is great! <laughs> Why are there tears in your eyes? Ah, uh, how hard is it to unlock him? The radio! Alright, Detective Gumshoe, tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you've made a big thing out of it, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> we'll see about that, pal. <laughs> Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to... I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you tried to win big just like Glen Elk did. It's... It's like you can see right through me! Huh. I've cracked him already? <laughs> see, pal, that's why I said it was nothing. Well, that was easy. <laughs> I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. You're usually pretty lucky? What's with everyone in the lottery? So, how did it go? I won 50 cents! It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad! Yeah, I know the feeling. I bought the same kind of ticket as Mr. Elk, you see. And they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal! I bet that's what Mr. Elk was listening to on the day he was killed, except he couldn't hear from that ear. Yeah, what time is it now? Uh, it's just after 1.30. And are the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah. Look, I got this flyer when I brought, bought the ticket. Millionaire radio? Millionaire radio flyer added to the court record. Experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30pm! Millionaire, millionaire, millionaire! Millionaire radio? That sounds cool. No, it doesn't, Maya. <laughs> I want to try it, Nick. No, you don't, Maya. Then buy a ticket, Maya, with your own money. All right, we gotta, we gotta post it. This is like the dumbest set of evidence ever. It's like a, a sports paper, a magazine clipping, job listings, someone's poem. A lottery ticket, and the poster for the lottery ticket, and an empty medicine bag, <laughs> and like a dirty apron. <laughs> this is the most like ridiculous set of evidence. A dirty apron, and a broken scooter? <laughs> Alright, what should I present to him? Apparently, everyone's listening to the show now. Oh, wow. That's because everyone wants money. They say that the victim, Glenn Elg, was really into gambling. Yep, you can't beat a gambling. I love it too. <laughs> Is that why you're poor? I won $500 last night playing cards with Nick. Wow. Huh? We were playing for money? Of course, so you better pay up. You're a smart one, waiting for a cop to be present before asking for the cash. <laughs> Alright, so none of this is <laughs> is useful. Can I, like, examine things? Magical boxes box that spit out money. So, this was in the testimony. Table where the murder occurred, I guess so, with all this police tape all around it. Stain from the poison coffee. There's a window. Alright, so this is not this is not useful. 
I don't think we need anything here. Let's go ahead and go to the kitchen. January 7, very good kitchen. Huh, Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. I'll be back next month. Yes. Uh, what does that mean? Naturally? I'll be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. <laughs> she, she's the one who lent the money? No, oh, I will have everything ready, I promise. I love fire, you know. I love the way it crackles. Ha ha ha. No, 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 stop it, I beg you. Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. Please, no. This is not necessary. You can trust me, madam. Talk to anyone and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. I mean, you don't have to be that clear about it. Oh no, you don't have to worry. You know, you worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax. It's the oil of sandalwood. I do love raw meat from time to time. Ha <laughs> You should eat some raw meat because you're like really skinny. You should eat them right now. <sighs> I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye for now. You are so thin. You should eat some of his raw meat. Ah. Uh, I have shivers. I must rub some of my oil all over my body before I become a nervous wreck. Here, yes, that feels good. Uh. Oh, excuse me, sir. My eyes! Ah, my eyes! Your eyes! If you have trouble with your eyes, you need this the oil of sandalwood. Isn't this just the leftovers of what you were just using? <laughs> Alright, look. You... <laughs> you have some loan shark problems. Treasure chest, bottles... Oops, I didn't mean to click it. One large mirror... Clarice Armstrong's bedtime literature... Poems... Alright, so there's nothing new here. Let's go ahead and talk to him. Hey, you have dead problems, huh? You don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? No, you're right, Mr. Uh, you're right, sir, but perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, no? That way I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you the supreme dish. Putting on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. <laughs> but you're right, business is very difficult these days. Perhaps the name is the problem. People do not understand it. They think it is Trey. Oh. Wait, what? I just wanted people to think that my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays? <laughs> Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya? No, no, he's a girl. But this restaurant is my life. It is everything to me. Why is it so bad then? <laughs> I would defend it to the f to the last. No one would take it from me. So, who was that woman you were just talking to? Oh, you saw that. Ah, oh, yes, sorry. So, who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. So polite and graceful. <laughs> Polite, graceful, and she likes raw meat and fires, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's my kind of girl. 
<laughs> I'll be back next month. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. Innuendo. How did I think about it? Hey, Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well then let's show him that piece of evidence and see what happens. Alright. Present your debt. So long as that paper exists, I am but a delightful angel with broken wings. An angel? Huh. Doesn't bode well when you think about it. Yes, they keep harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? But good... Uh, if I did not owe them the money, I would have refused. Uh, I, what the... Okay, my French is awful. Of course. That's of course? Did you mean no? Yeah, of course. But my hands were tied! Please, what did you agree to help them with? No, I cannot say. If I tell you that woman, she will slice me up and eat me with the salad garnish. <laughs> Ew, I hope he doesn't mean that he'll literally be sliced up and served with garnish. Oh, that's... yeah, no, that's what he means. I'm going to guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract, am I right? Ah! Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman! The woman who was here earlier, I take it that she's, um... Why has it come to this? What a tragedy. Suddenly I find myself so deep in debt, it is a sign of the bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, it's your bad, bad business management. No, I'd say it's more of a sign of bad, bad culinary skills. That too. The woman who was here, the scary woman, she is from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? Yes, Tender Lender it is called. <laughs> Tender Lender. <laughs> Catchy name, just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. <laughs> Please, you must not borrow from them. If you must, no more than $10. $10 sounds like your whole monthly stipend, Maya. <laughs> hey, I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. So Tender Lender is the loan office you borrowed half a million from her. I wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. I am a weak woman. When I'm upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. That's not... That's not how real women function, that's just like... Advertising to make you buy things. It's not real. Thanks to thanks to them loaning me the money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. I'm like his slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. Um, who is he? The tiger. The tiger. Yes, he is the manager of the tender lender. A terrifying man, big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I clear the noise of the battered old scooter rides, as, I, as, soon as, I, as soon as I hear the noise of the battered old scooter rides, scooter he rides, I start to cry. This is this accent is awful. A big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter. Um, does this guy resemble me by any chance? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This man is a presence, a most formidable personality. Although... Yes, he does have the spiky hair, just like you. Yes, there is a resemblance there, I suppose. <laughs> Sounds like this loan office is worth checking out after all. If you want to visit the tender lender, it's just beyond Vitamin Square. Hey Nick, if you need money, I can loan you some as long as it's less than three dollars. <laughs> um, thanks for the offer. 
just beyond Vitamin Square, huh? <laughs> as long as it's less than three dollars. What is it? Is this your scooter? No, no, no. I saw it before in Vitamin Square, you see. No, take it away. Do not show it to me. Talk about an allergic reaction. Alright, well, that's not useful. So, do I have, uh... Do I have her in my court record? No. Wow. Vitamin Square... Oh, scooters here. January 7, Vitamin Square. Mm, I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? Maybe he went to buy another ton of bird seeds. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway, at least not for now. Besides, any more seeds today and I'm, I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. Yeah, but the scooter's here. Hey, check this out. I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you, otherwise you might be in for a shock. My phony must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine, a tiger loose in the city. Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a vast urban jungle. Huh? Don't worry, someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Don't lose hope. <laughs> Why is she trying to pep talk me into becoming my phony? <laughs> Uh, alright, let's, let's keep going. Let's move over to Tenderlander. Win through compromise? What? <laughs> January 7, Tenderlander. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like a loan shark, but also a boxing dojo. Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome! Talk about a creepy voice, it makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. You're here to discuss a loan? Uh, no, not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly, please. She's gone! Just like that! <laughs> she disappeared in the thin air. I guess we'll just have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick! This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick, let's take a look around, okay? Do you think it'd be okay? <laughs> of course! No one will ever know. Coffee? <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'll leave it here for you to enjoy, quietly. Yes, thank you. Do not touch the desk, please. <laughs> let's touch the desk! Nick, let's get out of here. <laughs> now she wants to get out of here. All right.